Immigrant communities in the North Metro met last night to learn about new immigration policies. It's happening as new guidelines from the Department of Homeland Security could lead to vastly more deportations and detention of undocumented immigrants. Last night, both mayors and police chiefs from Brooklyn Park and Brooklyn Center were joined by immigration lawyers to handle questions people have. People attending told us the recent guidelines have caused great anxiety and fear for some communities. Our officers are not ICE officers. They don't have any federal jurisdiction. They can't pick up people if they see them walking down the street, those types of things. Last week, President Trump unexpectedly announced he will continue the Obama administration's DACA or DREAMer program, which allows those who are brought to this country illegally as children to stay. Now, Isaiah is an interfaith group that is working with immigrants. And joining us right now, Catalina Morales. She is an immigration coordinator and organizer with Isaiah and also one of those protected under DACA. Thank you so much for coming in. Thank you for having me here. All right, I want to talk about Isaiah's work, but I want, I'd like people to hear your story. When did you come to this country and how did you come? I came when I was two. Um, my parents brought me here when I was two. And they literally carried you over the border? Yeah, okay. yeah, so I don't remember anything, but my, my dad told me that, uh, and my mom, that he carried me the whole way through. All right, and your parents divorced, he went back to Mexico, and you couldn't see him. Right, I, he went back to Mexico and I hadn't seen him for 11 years. Okay, and your mother is still undocumented? Yes. Okay, and when did you become, when did you apply for it and get DACA? Three years ago, I applied for it and, and I got it. Um, DACA had already existed before that, I just hadn't applied because I was scared. And there are 750,000 people like you, young people, who came as children who are protected under DACA, and Donald Trump is also saying he will support DACA. What exactly does it allow you to do? So it, it pretty much, it's like a two-year permit, um, and it gives me a driver's license, a social security number so I can get a job, and also go to school. Um, so it, it lets you be here, but it doesn't give you a chance to become a resident or a citizen. You have to reapply and with immigration and give them all your information and pay them every two years. All right. You now are an advocate, uh, an organizer. What is the attitude? How are people feeling in the immigrant community? Uh, there are uh, approximately 100,000, mostly Latinos, who are undocumented in the state of Minnesota right now. Um, from the community that I work with, right, um, I hear that a lot of people are, are scared right now. They, we don't know what's going to happen. We don't know exactly, you know, if there's going to be massive raids happening or where they're going to be happening. Um, people are scared to go to work. People are scared to go to the store. Any place that is, you know, mostly a place that they go on the weekends or things like that, they, people are staying home. All right. Uh, are you scared about your own family, your mother, who is undocumented? Yeah, definitely. I am. I'm scared um, for my whole family. Um, I think my biggest fear is for us to be separated. And are you worried that your DACA status might somehow be revoked? And is that concern widespread? Yes, that's, I think, a concern for anyone that has DACA right now, just because we really don't know what uh, President Trump is going to do and not do every day. Um, so we, you know, we are not sure that it's going to stay. All right. And this is 11 million people in this country who are in this status. There are people probably watching right now who are saying, well, yes, you were two years old, but you came illegally. What, what would you say to them who support President Trump's position on this? I think um, when people do say that, I think they need to look at foreign policy. Um, there's a reason why there's migration to this country, um, not only from Mexico, but other countries. And to be honest, I see it as a forced migration um, because of the foreign policies that obviously um, Mexico and the, and the U.S. Um, have coordinated to have. All right. Uh, in terms of Isaiah, there are more than 20 churches in the state of Minnesota that have signed up with Isaiah saying they will be sanctuary communities if ICE agents are trying to go and deport somebody. These churches, including this beautiful one uh, by McAllister College in St. Paul, will let them stay there. Tell us about that movement. Yes, um, it is pretty much a moral stance. Um, we have 25 churches to this day that have said that they're going to stand with immigrants, and it's more of a faith call. Um, I believe, you know, we, when we look at scripture and we look at the Bible, Jesus was a refugee, and closing the doors on people is not is not what you know God intended us to be doing to each other. What is the biggest misconception 
about undocumented people? I think right now would be that uh, we don't pay taxes um, or we don't contribute to the country. We actually, when we arrive, the IRS gives us something that's called an I-10 number um, and we're forced to pay taxes. We get paid through paychecks. Um, we give state, federal, uh, Medicare, Medicaid, we give all of that to the government and we can't apply for any of those and benefits. Is, and this is even for somebody like your mom? Yes, yes. Okay. definitely. Well, Kelly Morales, we do have a link uh, to Isaiah, which is a, a pretty big group, a lot of members yes. uh, on our website right now, and we certainly appreciate you coming in and sharing your story. I know it's been a very busy time for you. Thank you. All right.